Hello, Sean. Hey, John. Things still going well. We're nearly up to the World Cup break without losing an important game, so that is good. We're just about to take on Tottenham. I can see that Jurgen's not going to take a job with any big team, so that's nice. But do we actually know who their manager's going to be for this one? They have just reappointed Mauricio Pochettino. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Um, going, going back to the future, isn't it? Right. Thank you for that update. I had no idea. We still expect a... Awesome. Um, yeah, we'll try and get that win you're after, but, you know, new manager burst and all that. In a while, crack. Okay. I'll catch up with you after the World Cup, John. Everyone and welcome to episode 8 of Quadruple or Nothing with Liverpool here on the FM23 Beta on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play our last game before the World Cup break. It is in the Premier League as we travel to take on Tottenham Hotspur and before then as you can see on screen we are about to see who we do get in the first knockout round of the Champions League as well. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you've been done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well so you do not miss out on any of the fm23 content here on the channel but we have picked things up right when we are about to take part in this first knockout round draw if you missed yesterday's episode you would have seen the game in which we guaranteed our spot as a top qualifier for this draw against Borussia Dortmund as well as a very nice bit of revenge over Manchester City in the Premier League, so if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. We did just play one more game to finish out our group off the back of that, but nothing riding on that one for us, and it was against the Hungarian outfit in Berlin Velocity. And seeing as there was nothing riding on this game, we won't show you guys the highlights, but we did pick up a very comfortable win, 4 0, thanks to a double to Diogo Jota, as well as goals to Javi Elliott and Fabio Carvalho. As you can see, we put out a full rotation for this game and still picked up a very, very Good result there, so encouraging signs as this team will start to make some appearances in the cup competitions off the back of the World Cup break, but it did mean that we finished in top spot very comfortably. The other game in our group on this final match day, quite a big one. Dortmund needed a win over Porto to jump above them based on the head-to-head -head record, and they picked up a 2-0 win away from home there, two second-half goals, and that was just enough for them to jump above Porto into that second qualifying spot. So it was Liverpool and Dortmund who did make their way through Group B into this first knockout round drawing, going and having a look at how things finished up in all of the groups. Group A, Napoli and Chelsea get out of that one. PSG down in the Europa League. Group C, Real Madrid and RB Leipzig are going to be in this first knockout round draw. Olympiacos down to the Europa League. Group D, Atletico Madrid and AC Milan are another one of our potential opponents. Group E, Tottenham Hotspur did top their Champions League group despite the fact They've been a little bit iffy so far in the Premier League. And Red Bull Salzburg did finish in second with Eintracht Frankfurt getting the chance to drop down to the Europa League and try and defend their title. Group F, Benfica and Sevilla qualify out of that one with Ajax just doing enough there to beat Marseille into that Europa League spot. Group G, Bayern Munich and Inter make their way into the Champions League. Knockouts, Barcelona, nice and comfortable there. In the Europa League in Group H, it was a very even group this one. And Manchester City do top it despite the fact they only won two of their six games that they finish on top with Juventus also going through to this first knockout round draw and Bayer Leverkusen just one point further back will end up in the Europa League. But it is time for us to see who we are going to get in this first knockout round draw in the round of 16. Obviously, despite what the fans say, we can't actually get Dortmund they came out of the same group as us, so most of our fans, it would appear, are absolute idiots title favourites, of course, for this season, are Manchester City, but based on how we did in yesterday's episode against those guys, that does bode well for us for the knockouts, but it is time for us. I would still really like this. Just give me a minute. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, we can start to take part here. In the round of 16 draw for the Champions League, this time it is Rude Hullet who is in charge. There you can see the unseeded teams and the seeded teams, of course, 
which we are in amongst the teams that we can't get, I believe, are Chelsea, because they're from England, Dortmund from our group, and that is it. So the other six teams are open for us to take on in this round of 16, first out of the hat. Are Juventus? They will be taking on Real Madrid. So that is the first matchup in the Champions League knockouts. Next up, match two, it is RB Leipzig, and they are going to take on Tottenham. So there's an interesting clash there. Next up, out of the hat, are Red Bull Salzburg. And the team who will get those guys is Bayern Munich. So Bayern Munich there taking on Red Bull Salzburg. Now we get to match up for AC Milan, probably one of the bigger teams from that second pot, and they will be facing Benfica. So not a bad draw there for AC Milan after they only finished second. In a group matchup, five it is Sevilla. And that is one of the teams here that we obviously potentially could get. I don't think there's too many more who are too open for us in that second pot. But Manchester City will be taking on Sevilla. So now it's up to matchup six. The teams left in this pot are Dortmund, Chelsea and Inter Milan. So I think that does mean that we're probably going to get Inter Milan here in this round of 16, Dortmund next up, of course. We cannot get Dortmund, despite what our fans said before. In that poll, the absolute bunch of Muppets. And they will be taking on a Napoli team who finished on top of a really good group. And obviously in real life as well, it looks like they have a really strong squad at the moment. So that is an interesting matchup. Matchup 7, this is going to be Inter Milan. And if we have a look at the teams who can come out of this one, it is between us and Atletico Madrid. So potentially we could actually face Chelsea in the round of 16, but we are taking on Inter Milan. We'll go and have a look at the matchup info, which is quite a cool little graphic that you can bring up here in the Champions League draw. Obviously, we haven't played each other yet in the save, but Inzaghi is in charge. Brozovic is their captain, the star player. Romelu Lukaku, three time winners of the Champions League. We are six time winners. They are currently fourth in City R, and we, of course, are quite comfortably on top of the Premier League. So hopefully that is a tie that we can win, but it's going to be an interesting matchup there against quite a strong Inter Milan lineup. And that does mean that in the final matchup, it is Chelsea taking on Atletico Madrid. And that is the draw for the round of 16 for this season's Champions League. We will be taking on Inter Milan. But we have now gone forward to the day of this matchup. In today's episode, the last one before the World Cup break, taking on Tottenham. We did play two games off the back of that final one in the group stages of the Champions League first off a Premier League game. Hosting Leeds United was still nil all at halftime, but thankfully early on in the second half here, we did get a penalty. Mo Salah stepped up to the spot, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way, slots that away nicely, and gives us a 1-0 lead in the 50th minute. Then about 20 minutes later, we did grab a cushion goal. Nice ball there from Darwin, and Bellingham just jogs through the Leeds defence, puts that one into the top right corner to give us a 2-0 lead. And then about five minutes before full time, we made sure that we picked up another comfortable win here in the Premier League. It was Mo Salah there who sets up Luis Diaz and we pick up a 3-0 win. So going into this final game before the World Cup break, we are still yet to lose a Premier League game. So hopefully that will still be the case off the back of this upcoming matchup, taking on Tottenham. And off the back of that, we had our first game in the EFL Cup in the third round, taking on Shrewsbury from League One. Just like the Champions League as well, the Carabao Cup, EFL Cup, whatever you want to call it, does have quite nice graphical displays in Football Manager 2023 as well. But we waited very late to grab a goal in this game. We got a penalty in the 91st minute. And Mo Salah, thankfully, stepped up and battered that into that top left-hand corner. That was the only goal of the game. Some of our better players had to come off the bench there and save us. And we picked up a 1-0 win away at Shrewsbury. So that was probably... Our get out of jail free card used before this World Cup break. Only a narrow victory there against League One opposition, even though we started the game off with a full rotation like we did in that Champions League game against Falink Velocity, but certainly a game we should have won a lot more comfortably. But still, we will take the win and move on, having not been pushed. And we have actually had the draw for the next round of the Carabao Cup. And lo and behold, our first game off the back of the World Cup break is also against today's opposition. In Tottenham Hotspur at Anfield, that could be a good game to come back for before we do get stuck in to that January transfer window, albeit we'd need to sell a player before we could buy someone because, of course, we used all of our money bringing Jude Bellingham to the club. But what that means for the Premier League table going into this final game before the World Cup break is we are still on top and very comfortably so. 13 points clear of Arsenal and a further three points back to Southampton and Manchester City and Wolves 
are tied on 25 points in fourth spot for Still, and a really good spot on top of the Premier League. If we can pick up a win or even a draw away here at Tottenham, we should still have a really good gap there over the other teams and be in a strong position to hopefully lift the Premier League come the end of this season. But our opposition today are Tottenham. As you can see, really stuttering start to the season for these guys. 15 games, 5 wins, 3 draws, 7 losses on 18 points already. They are probably out of the title discussion unless we really blow things off the back of that World Cup break. But the big news going into this one is that they have finally appointed a new manager right before this last match, before the World Cup break, and they have gone back to the future. It is Maurizio Pochettino. So it's going to be very interesting playing the exact same formation that we play here at Liverpool. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on in his first match back in charge of Tottenham. The other interesting thing, of course, going into this game, they do have one of our former players, the player that we did sell to bring Jude Bellingham to the club, and that is Nabi Keita. He is playing in the defensive midfield there alongside Koyberg. And apart from that, obviously good players they have on their books like Kyungmin Son and Harry Kane as well. So I've certainly got a few dangerous players that we do need to look out for. And obviously, new manager bounce could be something we need to be wary of in this game. But based on their Premier League position, hopefully this is a game that we can win or at least get a draw from away from home and go into that World Cup break, having still not lost in the Premier League. In terms of us going into this one, we've given our first team players a good rest off the back of qualifying for the Champions League knockouts. The only game they've started in since then was that 3-0 win over Leeds. We're pretty much at full strength going into this one and hopefully can put out a good performance in our final match before the players do head to the World Cup and will come back shortly and hopefully keep that nice big lead on top of the Premier League as we travel to take on Tottenham Hotspur at their stadium. And here are the team sheets for this one. There are Tottenham Hotspur with Maurizio Pochettino back in charge playing a 4-3-3, looking very similar to what we have here at Liverpool. And there we are, as I said, our full strength 11. Lots of green Ws, albeit that most recent one was a little bit sketchy, but hopefully we can pick up some points here and keep that very big gap on top of the Premier League table. And nine minutes in, we have our first highlight of this game as a corner in our favour, which Virgil gets his head on the end of it, just goes over the bar. But so far, a good start from us with Nabi Keita, having also picked up a yellow card for Tottenham, and still nil, all coming up to the 15-minute mark. And that is half time in this game, just that one highlight of the first half from that corner. We have well and truly dominated Tottenham. 17 shots to one, albeit five on target to none, so not hitting the target that much. Also, both of our wingbacks have picked up yellow cards, which is a little bit concerning, but still. Looks like we are well on top of them. Hopefully we can keep this up in the second half and grab a goal to give us all three points. And 10 minutes into the second half, we have our first highlight of it back down the end where the first highlight was. And Son's going to put a ball into the mixer here for Tottenham. We do clear that, but Mo Salah can't get there before Davies and Son starts to jog his way inside the box. It's a big deflected shot there, not too sure who got on the end of it for us. And out of pretty much nowhere in this game, when you saw the stats at half time, Tottenham take a lead here in front of their home fans, and this could now be a very interesting test against Maurizio Pochettino's men. Son gets a shot off here from a tight angle, and that comes off the foot of Andy Robertson, and from there, Becker really had no chance. And shortly off the back of conceding that first goal, I think we do need to make a few changes here, because quite a few players on yellow cards as well, as quite poor rating, so Luis Diaz can come off for Diogo Jota. Also, Darwin Nunez, only on a 6.2. Roberto Firmino, can come on for him and we'll also change our wing back Simakas for Robertson and Gomez for Trent and hopefully that will get us back into this game now playing quite well but we are down by a goal to nil and we go forward to the 69 minute mark for our next highlight in this game and Tottenham starting to somewhat here get on the front foot based on these last few highlights especially off the back of getting the first goal in this game which off the back of the first half is a little bit hard to stomach but we get a chance here to play out from the back, Thiago there to Simakas, and Diogo Jota will try and play a ball over here for Mo Salah, but Davies heads that one down for Ramiro, and now Tanganga is on the ball. They're going to try and play out from the back here at Tottenham. We have been quite good so far this season, and pressing teams nice and high, and getting the ball back, so hopefully that is the case here, albeit they start to find some space down the left-hand side, and Hyungman Son just gets right in behind our defence. Somehow that ball finds its way into the top right corner. That's really poor defensively from us 
on our right hand side. And just like that, Tottenham have got us right on the ropes here with only 20 minutes left. It was some good build up play from them, stretching us there as we tried to press them nice and high. And Jungman Son, far too much pace there for our defense, finds that top right corner from a tight angle. And we are in a bit of trouble here, 2 0 down as we do take on Tottenham Hotspur. And they have another highlight here potentially right off the back of that goal. A front, a long ball over the top there, looking for Kulisevsky, but thankfully Alisson is there to tidy things up. Long ball over the top, straight away picks out Larice. Another long ball forward here. Good chance for Harry Kane, but thankfully puts that over the bar and he was onside. So we are dicing with things a little bit here going into these last 15 minutes. Still 2-0 down. And while we are here, we are going to make our last substitution as well. A few players down to Red Hearts. It does look like Jude might be starting to lose his discipline though. So Jordan Henderson will come on for him. We'll also chuck our wing backs onto attack as well as Jordan onto a sentiment on attack. And hopefully we can get something out of this game in the last 20 minutes. 2-0 down. And we are just inside the last 10 minutes of this one. We have a free kick here inside the Tottenham half. We need a goal now. If we're going to find our way back into this game and we get one, it's a messy goal. But Roberto Firmino off the back of a deflection from that Mo Salah ball into the box, scrambles that one into that top right corner. And we have five minutes now to try and grab an equaliser. Very, very messy goal, but we'll take it considering we've been a little bit FM here, I feel like, so far in this game, especially when you look at those stats, but we're making our way now into injury time. There is five extra minutes, but I think we do need to up the tempo a little bit, be more expressive, and also potentially hit some early crosses as well to try and get a few more chances here in the last few moments of this game. But I think that's probably about all we can do here because we've already tried to throw a few more players forward on attack. We might also move our defensive line to a higher one as well just to see if that will help here Nice and late, but unfortunately, no highlights so far. We are in the last minute, and for the first time this season, we lose a competitive match, and it is against Tottenham in the Premier League. Mauricio Pochettino returns with a win, and that does mean our gap at the top of the Premier League is going to just decrease ever so slightly, but we are still in a very good position going into that World Cup break. But truth be told, probably not the worst time to be dropping points, seeing as the players are now going to depart for a month and a bit, hopefully off the back of that break, they come back and get back into some good form. But I suppose the signs were there off the back of that dicey 1-0 win over Shrewsbury in the Carabao Cup. And now we get a chance to get some revenge on these guys in the fourth round of that competition. But that was a pretty average performance. Certainly played the better football based on the stats. But unfortunately, that did not show Hyungman Son on attack. It was too lethal for us. And for the first time this season since the Community Shield, we lose 2-1 away at Tottenham. So we've finally lost a Premier League match this season. I suppose it's not the worst time to lose one. As I said, right before that World Cup break, hopefully the players come back with a bit of revenge on their mind when we take on Tottenham in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. There are the other results from our match day, seeing as we were the early kickoff. And from the following match day as well, as you can see, Arsenal, they picked up a 3-0 win away at Fulham. And that does mean the gap is close to 10 points, but still... 16 games into the season, I am not too disappointed being 10 points clear on top of the Premier League. If you offered that to me at the start of the save, I would have bit your hand off, especially being 17 points clear of Manchester City as well. So we are still in a very, very good position and we have beaten most teams in and around us so far this season. Just that loss there to Tottenham who might start to make their way up the table based on that performance. And of course, with Milizio Pochettino in charge as well, but it is time for us to go on the World Cup break. Just one thing I thought we would mention off the back of that Tottenham game, the overall match momentum. Not quite sure how we lost that game. We are indeed the team with the red pointy down blocks there. Feels like we got FM'd a bit there, but Hyung Min Son was quite good. I think it is fair to say. And unfortunately, when Tottenham did get on the attack, our defence was a little bit lackluster, but the players who we do have going to the World Cup. Now these guys, we've got 12 players who are heading off to Qatar. Trent, Jude, Jordan, Joe and Curtis are going there with the English squad. A little bit surprised there to see Curtis Jones off the back of that injury, but obviously he's done enough since he did return. Virgil van Dijk is going with the Netherlands. Yo Yo Jota with Portugal, of course, in the save. Did not pick up an injury, which of course in real life is going to keep him out of that tournament. Thiago is going with Spain, our second team, I suppose is going to be Brazil with Alisson Fabinho 
and Roberto Firmino and also David Nunez is going, of course, to lead the line for Uruguay. So those are the 12 players we do have going to the World Cup. Hopefully they all play well over there, albeit would be quite nice in terms of us if they got knocked out nice and early and come back from that World Cup break a little bit earlier maybe than some of the other Premier League players do and they can join Mo Salah and getting a decent rest before we do come back from that World Cup break. But that will do it for today's episode. Unfortunately, our first loss of the Premier League season being defeated by Milizio Pochettino's Tottenham 2-1 away. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well in terms of when we'll come back for the next episode being as we did just lose to them i think the game we are going to come back for and also the fact that they do have the graphics in game for the efl cup we will come back for that rematch against tottenham and hopefully get some revenge on those guys and of course if we don't win that game that is our hopes of winning the quadruple done and dusted for the save so really if we're going to follow the save title it is a must win game and hopefully we play similarly in terms of stats to that game today against Tottenham but actually finish things off a bit better in front of goal and also decide two defense will come back right off the back of the World Cup break and hopefully get some revenge against Tottenham in the fourth round of that EFL Cup and also maybe have a bit of a clearer idea on where we could improve the squad going into the transfer window albeit as I said we would need to sell before we can buy someone, but that will be coming up in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.